Oh, it was just pouring, it looks like. Wow. Oh. Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. driving there uh, an 80 series land cruiser nice yeah. all right guys today is a big day for worsley we're doing three things we're getting a wabasto heater installed that's going to make a huge difference and really turn this into a comfortable camper we're also installing our battleborn lithium batteries which are going to go in conjunction with the red arc system which gives us power uh, to charge everything just like you would have in a house pretty much it's all being charged from a uh, a solar panel on the roof so we can't wait to get the batteries mounted hook up the red arc system and then hook that system up to the wabasto heater we'll show you how it all works it's going to be awesome yeah from the ridge over yeah step one was to remove the carpet and spray a rafter liner along the floor of the jeep this will provide an easy to clean surface as well as a layer of insulation for sound While that is drying, the boys are busy installing our Ezeon Cube awning. This will be used for a privacy and shower tent. So right now we're just working on mounting everything. So this is a 1200 watt inverter, which you, so you can plug in 110 uh, power here. And it'll be tied to the batteries, which will be sitting here in the Red Arc managers right there. to get that bolt out, put it across, fill the bolt. So when we got the Red Arc and Red Vision installed in here, um, we were at Matt's shop in Oklahoma, Exploration Outfitters, and the mechanics there made these little uh, L brackets of aluminum, and they sized it up for a 100 amp hour battery, which is what we had before, but now we have four 75 amp hours from Battleborn batteries. So we're just, we're using uh, their original kind of layout, but making it difference that two 75 amp hours can sit in there and not just one 100 amp. So we cut these uh, uh, bigger brackets or L brackets of aluminum, cut them up into four so we can line them up on the side of the batteries. And then we're using, uh, there's a few spots where they had drilled and then uh, put in a rib nut for the 100 amp hours. So we just took those, measured them and then made them longer with the new uh, L brackets. So that's what I'm just tightening down here. And then we're gonna drill and Riv not in on the uh, passenger side to get those two batteries mounted in place as well. So just putting in some Riv nuts. Um, we drilled out the L brackets on this side now, that side's all bolted in.
All right, so a lot of you have asked if you could see the interior of the JXL. So we're going to give you a quick tour, but we're going to do a full, complete walk around of this vehicle with all the additions, all the uh, build out that we've done this winter. But for now, we're just going to show you um, just a quick look at the interior and then show you what we've recently put on. Um, you've seen the, the build happening and now we'll show you just how it works. We've had a chance to use it and see its functionality and really enjoy all the new features. So first off, we've got a complete goose gear platform in here. Um, so both back seats are out and we've got the full sleeping platform. It comes in three sections. The rear section, 60% delete and the 40% delete. And both of these have little compartments which makes it really convenient because we have all our electronics underneath this area. We have the four uh, Battleborn 75 amp hour lithium batteries, which by the way are really awesome batteries. A couple of things we love about them, because we've had uh, bat uh, liquid acid batteries in here and AGM, but these, these beauties are one third of the weight of a regular uh, AGM battery. And the other thing is they can lay any position you want. There's no liquid in there that you have to worry about. So we have them laying out flat that allowed us to have a bit more space to put these in and to tuck them neatly under the under the goose gear platform. So we also have a red arc solar panel on the up on the roof, which is very powerful, 120 watts, constantly working. So here in the back of the Jeep we have the red vision panel which allows us to see what's going on with the system. So you can see input and output, um, how many amp hours you have left in the batteries, how much power you're using and so on. There's your solar energy per day. So it's a really powerful system that allows you to manage what's happening inside the Jeep. And we've, we've hooked up every piece of electronics we own and the, power, the system has been able to handle it and more. So we're really happy with this. So the Red Vision and the total management system from Red Arc properly manages our batteries. We've got an algae box that fits perfectly in this area. In here we've got also the divider system by Rumex which allows us to just divide it up into sections. So Carol's clothing here, my clothing there. There's a lot of room in this and it becomes a cabinet. The beauty is uh, we can also double it as a seat. So we just have this mat that fits on top of it and when, when the uh, bed is pushed back it gives all kinds of room for sitting on it. It can be used as a table if we're working in here. We throw one of our furs up on there and it just becomes a real cozy part of the interior of the tamper. Hey guys, I'm here with Dan. He's an installer. Actually, he's been with Wabasso forever. <laughs> he really knows his stuff, but he's got our, our heaters installed now and cranking out the heat and it is just amazing. It's going to be a game changer for us for sure. But Hey Dan, why don't you uh, explain a bit about what you've done so far to get this installed? Yep, yep, not a problem. We have the, the extension on the Jeep here, which is exactly where we decided to mount it because we can get down nice, nice and low to the floor. We can get our exhaust and our air intake for our combustion down through the floor. Works out really well. Um, we've got our air intake. It's going to be over on the passenger side here, and our hot air exhaust is going to be on the driver's side. Okay, so what we did is we mounted an Evo 40 heater. Uh, gasoline unit into the Jeep. We tapped into the existing fuel tank on the vehicle so there's no auxiliary tank needed to run the heater. Um, and this is 13,800 BTUs. Uh, nice dry heat. You're not putting any air condensation moisture into the vehicle running a propane heater or anything like that. Um, so we installed it under the floor. We ducted it through. We're just kind of now we're kind of finishing up mounting the controller and uh, getting it ready to go so uh, it's a great install yeah it looks it looks amazing it also comes with a, an app that you can work off the phone so a bluetooth connection yes and uh yep. tell us a bit about, about that so we've got an app it's called smart temp 3.0 it goes with our newest uh, controller which is also smart temp 3.0 and, and what that allows you to do is you have full control of the heater you can turn it on turn it off you can adjust your temperature you can set your timers you can actually customize these, the settings on it so that you can actually, if you've got multiple heaters, multiple vehicles you're working with, you can actually name the vehicle or name the heater to the vehicle. Uh, so when you're identifying them through the app, it makes it easier. Uh, and you have diagnostic capability through that as well. You can read trouble codes, you can clear trouble codes. Hmm. So it, it really is a game changer being able to do that. That's what we need. 
Ooh, that's nice and warm. That'll dry out the tent fast. <clears throat> it's 99 Fahrenheit in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's cranky. A little bit warm. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for hooking us up and. Uh, our pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoyed it and uh, know you guys are going to get some good use out of these. So Yeah. So for our audience, um, what can you tell them about the company? Just, you know, what you guys provide and, and just so they know some yeah. options, you know, because we have people that have all different configurations. Some are in Jeeps, some are in trucks. You might have a rear camper, you might have a trailer. So you have solutions for everything, it seems. We do. So yeah, we've got a wide variety of solutions. Wabasto is a company that's over 100 years old. We've got Heating solutions for commercial vehicles. Uh, this is a very unique application for us, but these are the fun ones. Um, and we do a lot of the uh, van applications, adventure vehicles. Um, you know, the Jeeps are really cool. And uh, so we got a lot of different heating options, cooling options. The air heater that we put in here, uh, it's going to be super efficient. Work at you know all elevations you guys are traveling to. So nice. Uh, be fun. Should be a really good solution for, for sure. Thanks, guys. Awesome seeing you. Thank you. you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Anytime. So much fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Really enjoyed. Thank you for all your hard work. Oh, Look yeah. forward Anytime. to seeing you guys. You know, Thank you. somewhere Thanks. down the road. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've had a good life. Here, Lindo. Behind me, Clay and Eli are jumping in the uh, prospector, saying bye to the boys and the kids, and they're heading down to Expo down in uh, Flagstaff. So they're going south, and we're going north. Uh, we'd love to see all of you at, at Expo, but this time we've got uh, things to do, places to go, so we'll, we'll catch you next time. Good morning, guys. We are almost all packed up here, getting ready to start heading from Montana right across to North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and into uh, Michigan. And we'll probably cross at Sault Ste. Marie, which is only a couple hours from the cabin. Well, about four hours from the cabin. But um, So it's gonna take us about four or five days, um, but we're excited to get going. We, we've packed everything we think we're gonna need for this journey, um, we're leaving Clay and Rochelle's place here and they've been kind enough to let us store some stuff here. It's just uh, the life of full-time travel. We have stuff stored with friends in Ohio. We have stuff stored with Kevin and Sarah from Lifestyle Overland at their place in Utah. We have a whole bunch of stuff in Amarillo, Texas with friends. And then we have an, uh, another pile stored away with family in Oregon. So. So we have gear all over the place and it's kind of allows us to pick up what we need depending on where we are at the time and one day i think we'll just get it all together and ship it somewhere and put it in a storage container but for now that's just the way it is we just don't have enough room for everything so we packed what we need for this trip and uh, we're going to be heading back to the cabin see you brother <laughs> thanks for having me see you there. Thank you. Goodbye, Michelle. Oh, <laughs> thanks for everything. Love you too. <laughs> I'm sorry about Piper. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. Bye. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere if we can make it around Bismarck uh, North Dakota tonight and then we'll just uh, carry on tomorrow so stick with us as we cross the entire country on our way back to the cabin
Place, huh? Isn't that gorgeous? Long drive, but we made it to North Dakota and we're now in an area called the Missouri National Grasslands. So it's going to be windy up here, but it'll be all right. We'll set up camp and relax. Where are you going to go? Sorry, you had so much fun running. Come here, buddy. Come on. Get <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? How about this, Randy? There it is. All right, we. We're parked at that spot, but I thought I'd just run up the road up to the top of the hill here and see if there's one other camping spot. It looks like there's a few, so uh, sometimes just scouting around a bit, you find a real gem, so let's see what's up there. And in the meantime, it gives Lando a run because we've been doing some pavement today and he's got lots of pent up energy. Yeah. Yeah, some real pretty spots up here. Awesome, okay, we'll come towards you then. All right, so let's go. One rock on each wheel and we should be level. Dan is sleeping and I accidentally opened the door and now I can't shut it. So this spot is gorgeous overlooking a uh, pretty epic view. We'll set up camp here for the night. In the morning we're going to keep pressing east. We're just into North Dakota. We might get as far as Minnesota tomorrow. Teddy Roosevelt National Park. We've been here before. It's an amazing area. Last time coming through, we stopped at the park. Well, we're just outside of the park now, but you've still got the bison roaming. Oh, that'd just, be uh, wonderful. Could you imagine if we can hear them tonight? Or if uh, they go through our camp tonight? Yeah, that'd be pretty epic. That'd be a nice dream come true. Yes. Oh, sorry, man. Thirsty. It's awful nice to be inside. We're a little overcrowded with gear because we're just scooting across the country, but here we are inside with the heater on, making a coffee. Ooh. 
Outside it is blustery, just above freezing. Raining and super windy, so perfect morning for this. Smells good. Alright, so we just had a big day on the road, uh, did a good 12 and a half hours driving. We decided to grab a KOA cabin like we do sometimes when we're traveling really hard and uh, gonna spend the night here and then carry on. We have about, I'd say, eight hour drive without stop. So another good full day tomorrow, probably 10 hours, uh, getting over to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. And then we'll, it'll be probably the end of the day, so we'll cross into Ontario the next day if all goes well so that's the plan we're super excited uh, to be getting back to the cabin and we're making a hard push to get across this morning it started raining really hard and we had the sideways rain just pelting the sides of the canvas so uh, they seem pretty dry but we're just gonna crank the heaters for a bit uh, we popped up the tents and just see if we can uh, with the heat just dry them up completely before the drive tomorrow slowly acclimatizing back to this area uh, there's black bears here and all kinds of wildlife um, canoe shops and fishing shops it's just a, it's a different area but it's got its own mystique and beauty so we're really excited to be in this area it's very similar to on the other side of the Great Lakes in Ontario so we're getting close we're about six and a half hours from Sault Ste. Marie Michigan and then uh, that's where we cross into Ontario. So we'll take you with us. Don't wait for me. Don't wait. Anything else in anybody? Okay. Hey guys, we are in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Just cross the border, letting Lando stretch his legs, grabbing a Timmy's, and uh, getting up to the island. All right, so we made it back to Canada. Now we're just fueling up and then heading onto the cabin. So excited, like really, really excited. Yeah, it just fell. Oh, it just gave birth. Oh. 
It was just pouring, it looks like. Wow. Oh. Look at that thing, it can barely move. Oh. How precious. That was amazing. I mean, it looked like it was just born. It was just getting its legs. Oh. I'm so happy we got to see that, and I'm super happy they made it safe past the road. Not that there's too many cars here, but still, that was really neat to see. Unbelievable. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road. After almost two years of being away from our beloved cabin, it is so nice to be back. Stay tuned each week as we bring you all of our family adventures living off the grid on a remote island in the wilderness.